Lord Jesus Christ, we receive the body of Vernon Harris in the service of Thanksgiving and later for burial at the St. James Cemetery. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn man to destruction and say, Return, O children of men, for a thousand years in the sight are like yesterday when it is past, and like a watch in the night. You carry them away like a flood. They are like a sheep asleep. In the morning, they are like grass which grows up. In the morning, it flourishes and grows up. In the evening, it is cut down and withers. The days of our lives are 70 years. And if by reason of strength, they are 80 years. Yet their boast is only labor and sorrow. For it is soon cut off and we fly away. So teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Man who is born of woman is few of days and full of trouble. He comes forth like a flower and fades away. He flees like a shadow and does not continue. For we bought nothing into the world and it is certain we can carry nothing out the Lord gave and the Lord taketh away blessed be the name of the Lord and behold and the, behold I am coming quickly and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work I am Alpha and Omega the beginning and the end the first and the last blessed are those who do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city but outside are dolls and sorcerers and sexual and moral and murderers and idolaters and whoever loves and practice a lie I Jesus have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches I am the root and offspring of David the bright and the morning star and the spirit and the bride say come and let him who hears say come and let all who thirst come whoever desires let him take the water of life freely good morning ladies and gentlemen we want to say thanks to you family and friends supporters and well-wishers of the Harris and the Waterman families who have graced us with your presence. We also want to say thanks to those who have joined us on social media platforms. Thanks to the minister and the church board of the Western Lake Church of the Nazarene for accommodating us. And thanks to all who have an active role in the execution of the proceedings today. Let us bow our heads for prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, we give you thanks, we give you praise for this opportunity. It's an opportunity that is filled with different types of feelings. But today, God, we commit our ways into your hands. We ask, O oh God, that you will guide us. We ask, O oh God, that your holy presence will be with us even now. We ask, God, that you will strengthen family members, brothers, and those who are close, sisters, and other family members, God, we commit them into your hands. May your Holy Spirit guide and may your Holy Spirit direct. We pray today, God, that your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, all that we need to sustain us, all that we need to keep us, all that we need to strengthen us. We ask God that you will forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have hurt us those who have wounded us we forgive them lord because we also seek your forgiveness and lead us lord not into temptation 
but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We ask today, God, that all that we do will bring glory and honor to your name. We ask that you bless your word to our hearts. That at the close of this service, Lord, those among us who might not know you as Lord and Savior will make a decision for you. Cover us, we pray, and be with us. In Jesus' name, amen. The very first song on your song sheet. Through all the changing scenes of life. the audience to please take your seats. We're going to have now the first lesson, Psalm 46, by Ingrid Durant, followed by the hymns, My Jesus, I love thee, and great is thy faith.
taken from Psalms 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be moved, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, sailor, there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, she shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen rage, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow. He cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Here ends the Bible reading. My Jesus, my darling, I know thou art my 
continue with Great is Thy Faithfulness. Somebody give God thanks for his faithfulness. Somebody give God thanks for his faithfulness. He has been good to us. The chorus said, great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand have provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Surely we can attest today that God is faithful to us. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to have the second lesson, Revelation 21, 1 to 8, by Paula Waterman, followed by the hymn, Just As I Am.
Bible reading is taken from Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 to 8. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And, and, he, and he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I made all things new. And he said unto me, Write for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and the unbelieving, and the abominable, ab abominable and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars, shall be their part in the lake, which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Here ends the Bible reading. Just as
bless the name of the Lord. I just want to remind us this morning that as we live from day to day, we experience good times and we experience bad times. But in the midst of it all, the Lord Jesus offers us hope. It is hope that is an anchor for our souls. It's a hope that is sure. It's a hope that is steadfast. It is the hope of eternal life. And today, just as that songwriter said, I come. I urge you that if God should speak to your heart as you hear the word of God, that you would not harden your heart. It is an over, um, open invitation to all. And if Christ should knock at your heart's door, I implore you, please open the door of your heart and let him in. To share the word of God with us this morning is Reverend Kevin Harris. I suppose he's not a stranger to a lot of us. He's a relative of Vernon Harris. He's a minister. He's presently the minister of the church at New Testament Church of God, Fitz Village. And as he comes with the word of God, may the Lord bless him and may the Lord bless you. Jesus Christ and I welcome you in this service of thanksgiving for my cousin Vernon Harris Vernon lived a long life indeed he made it to 87 I started thinking just recently that it seems that my family have had have me earmark as the funeral preacher or funeral conductor of funeral families. Right at this pulpit, at the end of uh, April, I stood and I preached the homegoing service of my mother, who lived to the same age, 87, as Vernon. Early October in New York, I preach at the homegoing service of my aunt, Juliet. And there is something that is, I, I, I only realized it this morning when I saw the greetings going out for my cousin, Saran, whose birthday is today, that Vernon is being buried on Saran's birthday today. And my Aunt Juliet was buried on her sister's birthday, Auntie Sheila, in New York. So it looks like once you pass somebody's birthday, you've made it. Somebody should laugh. You've made it. But if you're coming up to somebody's birthday, be careful, you may not make it. And I may have to preach another funeral. I want to greet my family who are here, all my cousins, all of the siblings of Vernon, um, the one who was named after him, Vernon Harris as well, my cousin, 
I see my uncle Martin, and it's so good to see Gurley here this morning. Really good to see you, Gurley. Glad to see you. And everyone who've come, friends and family, to share in this homegoing service. I had the privilege on the 1st of May to be at Vernon's bedside. I believe I can say that I was the last person to be there when he was alive. I left the hospital maybe about minutes to 8 o'clock. I went to visit him and two members from the Fitz Village Church, and I made a double back. Something in my spirit told me to go back to Vernon's. I went first to him, and something told me to go back to his bedside. And I took time to pray with him, to pray for him. And in as much as he did not, he was not, you know, verbal. He just opened that left eye and he looked at me and then he closed it again. I told him who I was. I reminded him of who I was. I don't think I had to tell him too much about who I was because he knows me. But he just looked, relaxed, and then just kept breathing. By the next day, I received word that he had passed. I want us to focus a little bit on the last passage of scripture that was read and maybe I can get my friend upstairs to bring it back up for me, Revelation chapter 21, and just focus on verse 1 for a minute. I don't propose to keep you here very long this morning. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And we can go through it some more as I go along. Father, we ask that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart may be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. We are living in turbulent times. And indeed, this earth that we inhabit, the earth that is now going through the throes and the upheavals and the uh, unfortunate happenings that we have never encountered before. Just this morning as I took a little time to meditate. I was actually walking the two dogs that were left for me to look after at home by my daughters. I started to think of what we have gone through recently, pandemic. And then when I got home, I, I said to my wife, look up for me what is an epidemic. Now, apparently, they don't seem to recognize that an epidemic is something lesser than a pandemic. And they have now thrown everything together in one lump. So as you look up for anything, when, was we, when did we have the last epidemic in Barbados? They will say the last pandemic. But I think I can reflect and recall on times when we in Barbados had people who had an outburst or we had an outbreak of polio. That would have been called an epidemic. And there are people who still suffer the effects of polio. You see how they walk. You see how they, their bodies are, you know, um, ill-formed and what have you. But we are living in an age when all these things have come to bear upon us. We are in a serious and difficult time. This earth, this earth, this present earth is going too much. And not only is the earth going too much, but as a result, all of us, I, I started to talk to my family as I came in, and who wasn't telling me about the arthritis, was telling me about, you know, I'm not worse, but you know how the body is, and et cetera, et cetera. Because that is where we find ourselves, all of us are going through something 
some circumstance at this time. The best person in this room today is Vernon. He ain't going through anything. I hope somebody got that good. Think somebody said amen. He's going through nothing. He has been there and done that. But all of us, we are going to face a tomorrow or today that will have something that will bear some sort of pressure upon us. It's another bill to pay. Light water, telephone, what have you. It's another supermarket list to face. $30, $40 chicken. It's another event that we have to go through, that we have to face. And this earth, this earth that we are in, is going through the throes of life. But John the Divine on the Isle of Patmos said, I saw a new heaven and I saw a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. That gives me something to hope for. Something to look for. Something to believe God for. What I recognize is that we all have an appointed time. Yes, the days of our years are three score years and ten. And if by reason of strength, four score years. And then I had a grandmother, Uncle Martin, she used to say, on good behavior, you might make, you know, four score plus. If you're on good behavior, you get a little extra piece. So, we live in this age where we live to stages. I started to reflect recently, dear uncle, and I said, when Auntie Juliet died, everybody in that latter category were in their 70s. You had half of the remaining siblings in their 70s and the other half were in their 80s. And I thought of it, I said, look how life is. Because I'm thinking that I'm the young boy of the group, but I am heading hard to hit the 70s with them that are 70. I'm catching up with them. So we find ourselves moving in stages from one stage to another, to another, to another. And we don't recognize sometimes how the impact of it is upon us. The slightest thing that happens to us, we feel it. We feel it. I have a granddaughter who's two years old. And if she stumbles and she falls, she gets a pop up the knee, the knee. And I'm saying, knee what? You're only two years old, what knee? You can't be complaining about the knee. Leave me that is, you know, over 60 to complain about mine. But she would get up and she would talk about the knee or the ankle. I don't know she's trying to tell me she has these body parts that she can now recognize. But she is telling me it hurt, it hurt. And she's only two years old. What about us who are older? Us who go through things in life. I am sure that all of us in this room today, if I had given you the opportunity, will tell me what are the aches and the pains that you suffer from in this life. But there is a new heaven that God has promised us in the which no pain, no hurt, nothing that now hurts or annoys us will ever be there. There's nothing to bother us in the new heaven. And that is where we should be aiming to reach. So that when we have achieved all that we have gone through here, when we get to the new heaven and the new earth, all the former things that we know would have passed away. I would never have another pandemic to face. Never have to worry about whether the vaccine was right, wrong, or correct. Never have to worry about wearing another mask or doing all the things that we do now. You, you saw that uh, 
our brother here make sure that everything is sanitized for us because we are still living with all these things coming at us but there is a life to come that God has promised us in the which no germs nothing is going to bother us there I, I am I am I am touched by the fact that God has made preparation for us deep preparation the first heaven and the first earth are all passed away and there is not even any sea not even any sea John said I saw the holy city New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven prepared as a bride for her husband and I heard a voice out of heaven saying behold the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and there shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God do you want to be with a God that can do anything for you and cause you not to go through all the things that you are going to know don't you want to live that wholesome and that happy life? I want to say to you today that Vernon has brought us here today to prepare ourselves for the life to come. I think I heard an amen somewhere there. If I had given you the opportunity to come here today of your own accord, some of you might not have come. I could probably see my cousin... <laughs> um, my cousin Tyron fixing somebody's roof or helping somebody put back up something somewhere today. He would have some other engagement. But because of his brother, he's here. Has to be here. I can see some of my other cousins uh, saying, well, look, I have other engagements. But the fact that we have come makes us come, we sit, we think, and we try to apply ourselves to what God is saying to us, God shall wipe away all tears from our eyes. I found myself this morning as I was preparing to come here with a tear in my eye. Because, you know what? The reality is that on this earth, we feel the loss, the pain, the hurt, the suffering. We feel the, the, the separation on this earth. We feel that, 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 you know, what, what we have gone through. You don't know it if you have not experienced it. I stood by his bedside on Monday and I saw the breathing, the throw of his up and down. I know Tyrone went that day, but I, I probably can boast a bit, a bit about it because I, I think I'm the last person that stood there by his bedside. And I said to my cousin Vernon boy, you're going, go with God, go with God. I know that a lot of people say that persons who are unable to communicate, you don't know, you don't know, you don't know if they're hearing you, they don't know this, you don't know that, you don't know how they die. That may be true, but we don't know, we don't know. So therefore, I said, knowing or knowing not, I'm going to pray, I'm going to talk to him, and I'm going to tell him what to do. I said, you need now to put your whole trust and confidence in God. This is your last moment. Just say, even if these final words make sense, Lord, have mercy. And I say to you today that once we have found that peace with God, once we have separated ourselves from sin and found salvation with God, we can make it into the new heaven that God has prepared for us. Lots of people, and I, I, I say this all the time, anybody that is dying with a death sentence on their life, that is such that they know they're never going to recover from it, should never die and not make their peace with God. And I'm so happy that I found that out on the 22nd day of September when I was in New York with my aunt. She had made her peace with God. That is something that all of us 
are here today to hear. Make your peace with God. Make your calling and your election sure. Let God wipe away the tears from your eyes. All fears from your eyes. All tears from your eyes. And there will be no more death. For the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. And we want to get death out of the way. But if I were to ask you, I'm sure if I were to ask you, who want to be next? I don't see a hand in here that can go up. Not one hand in here can go up. See people laugh and say, not me. Not me. My friend there saying, mm, not me. Nobody wants to die. Everybody want to get heaven though, but nobody want to die. Everybody wants to live. And live as long and as best as we can. But living is not only just about existing. Living is about having a relationship that counts when it comes to God. And I want to say to you, my friends and my family, let us make sure that at the end of the day, when we have lived, we have lived well. For God is going to say, well done. But he can only say, well done, if you have done well. We have examples. I remember well when Vernon and Kenrick were both hospitalized. I had the opportunity to visit there then. At church they say I am the hospital visitation person. Kenrick went on to be with the Lord and Vernon came out. Vernon recovered. And I remember one day we were in conversation. I said to him, Make sure, Vernon, make sure that your calling and election is sure. Make sure. Make sure. The last verse we read before I close says that the fearful and the unbelieving and abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake of that which burneth with fire and brimstone which is second which is a second death i remember years ago a young boy visiting sister world it was a christian mission church and i remember that song that says the good and bad shall be divided the good at god's right hand the wicked and the unbelieving together they shall stand forever you must go away if you neglect your soul away from god's eternal home i think it says forever you must go remember that we are here together to hear this and to apply it to our hearts uh, that we want to make it in as we get older, we want to live closer to God. As we get older, we want to be sure that when all is said and done, we have a mansion over the hilltop. We have a home prepared for us. The house I live in, Tyron and Oswald, my cousins, built. But you know what? There's a house prepared for me in heaven that they can't have any kind of construction access to God has prepared a far better place for us and that is why we have come here today that is why my um, I, I would say my cousin has helped us to come here today so that we can be reminded of the fact that when all is said and done this corruptible must put on incorruption this mortal must put on immortality then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory oh death where is thy sting oh grave where is thy victory the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God that gives us the victory. 
And I don't know about you, but I want to, at the end of my living, to make it in with God. I don't want to live a life that is never going to count for anything. I want to know that in the new heaven, I have a place prepared for me. They tell me that I like to sing old songs. And that's one that came back to my mind just now. Of course, I think Jesus has gone to prepare a mansion for me. Far, far away over the sea, there'll be no sorrow. There'll be no pain. For Jesus has gone to prepare a mansion for me. And not only for me, Kevin Harris, but for me, all of you that are here, all my family, all you, my friends, all of you in the hearing of my voice, whether here or whether over far away, multimedia. Because nowadays we can preach to anybody wherever they are. But I want to tell you that this mansion that is being prepared for you, you have to also prepare yourself for it. You have to ask God, like the writer said, into my heart, into my heart. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today. Come in to stay. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. We have one opportunity that has been afforded to us today by Vernon. That is to come together and to reflect on how we are going to spend the rest of our lives on this earth and in eternity. I trust that something I have said have stirred your thoughts, have provoked your mind, and have made you to think, you know what? At the end of it all, I really want to make it in. I really want to make it in. On this, my uncle's daughter's birthday, Saran, as we lay Vernon to rest, I want to say to you, family especially, let us make it. Let us make it. Let us make it. Let us not only be a family on this side of heaven, but let us be a family on the other side. Miriam is waiting. Unita is waiting. Juliet is waiting. Edgar is waiting. Um, fa father of Mr. Waterman is waiting. Let me just say Mr. Waterman is waiting because the first name is eluding me right now. Kenrick is waiting. All of us want to see them. And if there's one thing that I can boast of on this side of my family, we have a big family. Every year, we would meet together on Christmas Day at the Waterman's house because that's Tyrone's birthday. And we would have fellowship, friendship. We would enjoy each other. Let us make sure that when we have left this earth, we go to the other side and we can still have that fellowship. Am I making sense to anybody? I want to be there. I don't know about you, but I want to see you when I get to the new Jerusalem. I want to be with you. I want to enjoy the family that I have here. I want to enjoy that family link over there. I want to see all of you in the new Jerusalem. I'm going to ask all my family to stand at this time. Family stand. Look at them, look. Look at them. Look at them. All the siblings of Vernon. All his nieces and nephews and cousins. Look at them, look. If I don't see you in heaven, believe me, it wouldn't be because I didn't preach. It would be because you didn't heed the word. My cousins, look at them, look at them. I, I hope that the, the cameraman is getting them good. Armour would get them good. Look at them. And I love them. I want you to know as I stand here this morning, with a tear trickling in my eye right now, I love you. 
my cousin Jill, you know I went to school at Common Mary with him for almost all my life and only knew he was my cousin when his father died. I only knew that when Ken Rick died. And Vernon was introducing me to his brothers. I said, oh, Jills. He said, you know him? I said, yeah, we went to school together. You see him? And I'm going to ask Pastor Maria to stand because she's family too. He was his, he was her stepfather. We're going to pray at this time for family and prepare ourselves to go to the St. James Cemetery, or as I would call it, to yonder bone yard. Father, I thank you for this opportunity to stand in this congregation and to proclaim your word. We, like John, anticipate a new heaven and a new earth. We anticipate that when we get there, we're going to see our loved ones. We're going to see those whom we love, whom we have lived and embraced and fellowship with. We're going to enjoy the sweetness that we know here on earth. I ask for your comfort for all of us who are relatives of Vernon. I ask for your comfort and your peace. I ask for your strength. I ask that you will help us, God, to focus on the fact that it is not only to live, but how we die is also important. And where we go after death is likewise important. To strengthen all the siblings of Vernon. Do strengthen all the relatives do give peace and pardon and help that as we God focus on the years ahead of us we would live such a life that we would be able to join those who have gone on before strengthen us God give us peace give us understanding Give us a mind that is focused uh, not on the things of the earth, uh, but on the things of heaven. So that when we leave this earth, uh, we will be able to say, my cares are all past. I am home at last, ever to rejoice. Now bless and strengthen us as we go to the St. James Cemetery. And as we stand by that graveside, stand with us. As the writer says, stand by me, O Lord, stand by me. Precious Savior, stand by me. I have no strength, no power of my own. Precious Jesus, stand by me. Stand by us as we continue to interlock together as a family. And give us the grace, the peace. To go forward in thy name, we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that forgive us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let's all stand together and we turn in our sheets to the hymn, Amazing Grace, as we prepare to make our way out. And when we get to the third verse, we will be prepared. We ask the Paul Bears to prepare themselves to take us out. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Da 
The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host shall encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rage against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me, he shall set me up upon a rock. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. For as much then as it has pleased Almighty God in his wise providence, to take out of this world the soul of our brother, I therefore commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Looking for the resurrection at the last day and the life of the world to come to our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose coming to judge the world the earth and the sea shall give up their dead, and the bodies of those who sleep in him shall be changed and be made like unto his glorious body, according to the power by which he is able to subdue all things to himself. Let us pray, Almighty God. We gather beside this grave today to lay to rest our brother, our cousin, our friend, Vernon Harris. We recognize, O oh God, that we do this remembering another grave in another place, the tomb that received the body of our Lord Jesus. As Jesus came from the grave to live again, we know that all who die in you shall never truly die, but they are just asleep. Help us, Father, to walk by faith and not by sight, with all trust in him who said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and I am the last. I am the living one. I was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore, and I hold the keys of death and of Hades. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord's Prayer, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As we sing this first hymn, we shall ask the family that will be laying flowers on the casket to come up. And to do that, but the first hymn here at the graveside will be Blessed Assurance.
He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. For He shall give His angels charge concerning thee over all to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest they dash thy feet against a stone. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me down to lie. In pastures green he leadeth me. The quiet waters by.
When we all get to heaven, sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansion bright and blessed, he prepare for us a place when we all get to heaven. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place when we all Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort. Come, ye children, hearken unto me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desireth life, and love of many days, that he may see good? Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And we know that if this earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hand, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly desiring to be clothed upon, with our home, which is from heaven. If so be, that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that have wrought us for the selfsame thing in God, who also giveth unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent 
from the Lord. For we walk by faith and not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Therefore we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. In the sweet by and by, there's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see it afar. For the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there in the sweet by and by. My shepherd, I'll not want.
Thou the God of peace, that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the eternal blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. We want to thank you on the behalf of the Harris Waterman and extended family for coming and sharing this moment with us. We pray that as you go to your homes today, the reflections of all that we have said, all we have done, may forever be with you. Vernon is in the place that God has allotted. We now have to live so that someday we will be in God's eternal home. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Go with God.